Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to look at the latest on the heat wave that is now slowly coming to an end but we'll also have a look at the risk of some severe thunderstorms over the next 48 hours as the, th the heat wave comes to an end still with a lot of energy around we'll start to see low pressure and more triggers and instability move in and we could see some really quite lively uh, and severe conditions in places. We now have weather warnings issued for both today and for tomorrow. So we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll go through what the temperatures are, as we could in fact actually hit the peak of the heat wave today before we do slowly drop off over the next couple of days. We'll have a look at the weather warnings, as we do have two yellow warnings issued for today and tomorrow. And then we'll have a look at some shorter range models, UKV, the uh, Arpege, and we'll have a look at the Rome run as well to have a look at the thunderstorms and the thunderstorm risk over the next couple of days. It will be very hit and miss, but where it does occur, it could be pretty severe. And then we'll finish the video by just having a look at the longer range. So, of course, we've got the rest of September to deal with. At the moment, it doesn't look likely we will be seeing a return to any heat wave conditions. A lot of variable conditions likely in the longer term. Some even some quite stormy conditions arriving perhaps within the next week or two. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see where the division is between the very hot air and the cooler, more Atlantic air starting to nudge in. Now, you can see this weather front that's just on the edge of the radar. Uh, the weather front is much, uh, much bigger than this, much more extensive, but it's only just on the edge of the radar, uh, as we don't have radar out to sea. So, at the moment only uh, showing up very uh, small amounts, but this is slowly edging southwards and eastwards, and it's got cool Atlantic air behind it, got the very hot and humid air ahead of it. We are seeing a few showers breaking out across Scotland and Northern Ireland, where we did see a few isolated thunderstorms in places over the last couple of days. But the risk through the rest of this afternoon is for parts of Northern England, maybe Northern Wales, for thunderstorms even getting close to Southern England as well. Now, it's a widespread yellow warning, but only a few places will likely see thunderstorms over the coming hours. They could be extreme in places, but they will be very hit and miss and explode into action in very short notice. So at the moment... It's half two as I'm recording this. Uh, we haven't got any thunderstorm activity really at the moment. Some of the models, as we see in a minute, will be showing thunderstorm activity by this time. But we know from past events that it can change very quickly. Uh, and Sod's Law will be, by the time I record, uh, upload this in probably about 45 minutes time, half an hour's time, the thunderstorms will start to trigger. So if you are watching this now, do check the live radar as these things can change very quickly. Not expecting anything widely severe today but it could be locally pretty severe tomorrow however there's a higher chance of more widespread thunderstorms as that instability moves closer we've got some very high cape levels around both today and tomorrow just more triggers around tomorrow to cause those thunderstorms and you see across parts of northern france now out towards the bay of biscay some thunderstorms on the edge of the radar here and that's that instability slowly moving northwards and it will arrive on our shores tonight into tomorrow that's going to be the main clump of instability uh, and, and areas of thunderstorms that will continue to grow. But as I said today, apart from the thunderstorms, there's another extremely hot day. Widely temperatures already by 2 p.m. around the 31 or 32 degree mark for much of England and Wales, exceeding darker reds. And it's the whole of England, really, not just the southeast corner, a few spots like it has been at times this week. And we are likely to break that temperature. We, uh, the, the peak temperatures we saw early this week uh, getting up into sort of the 33 and maybe even 34 degree range. We did see a little drop yesterday in the temperatures because we had a bit more haze and cloud around, but we still got to around 31. Today, we could get to around 33 or 34, uh, as we're already at 32 by 2 p.m. So it's even hotter across northern France, but this hot air is slowly going to be retreating. You can start to see slightly cooler influences are coming to the north and the west at the moment, slowly edging more widely over the coming hours and the coming days. But you can see how the heat really is concentrated across much of northern and western Europe, just a plume of North African air that is just sitting under this high pressure. Well, to our east, out towards eastern Europe and Russia, much cooler. Even down towards parts of western Spain and Portugal, it's cooler as well. We've got a trapped air of low pressure here. So we really are in this little bubble of heat at the moment. And unfortunately, if you do like this warmth, it's going to be bursting pretty imminently in the next day or two. 
But if you do uh, hate this sort of heat and humidity, unfortunately next week we're not looking like temperatures will be getting much above maybe the low 20s at best in places, much more in line with what we'd expect for September. Now we can have a look at the max temperatures, I've just quickly refreshed this, as the 2pm temperatures are coming out as I speak. We've got a couple 2pms on here, but the majority is still 1pm recordings, because you widely hear 30 to 32 degrees, and again this doesn't cover every weather station. The last couple of days we've had multiple other weather stations not show up here, actually getting the top temperature of the day. So we'll have to wait until probably 7, 8 p.m. this evening when the Met Office will put an update out on the top temperature of the day. And it most likely will be the peak of the heat wave around that 33 or 34 degree mark somewhere across probably the southeast or eastern England looks most likely. As you can see, a lot of the top areas here are North Alt, London Gatwick, Mildenhall Royal Air Force, North Alt again, Charlwood, Heathrow, Coningsby, London City. So Areas in the east and the south, again, most likely to reach that peak temperature in the next hour or two. But it is a widely hot and humid day. Unfortunately, if you don't like this heat, it is reducing soon. Uh, tomorrow still could be maybe 33 in the far east. But for many areas further westwards and northwards, it is going to be cooling down. Now, if you look at the weather warnings, you can see we've got this thunderstorm warning issue today and it expires at 9pm. A few heavy showers and thunderstorms are possible, leading to some disruption. You can see it's a very large area covering much of the Midlands into parts of Wales, the eastern England, even nudging into southern England, up towards the northeast as well. But as you can see, it was updated uh, earlier to include parts of Lincoln and uh, Yorkshire. And we must emphasise here, most places will stay dry. A few places may see heavy, slow-moving showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon and early evening where these develop. Possibly 30 to 50 millimetres an hour or two large hail and lightning are additional hazards. And it's because these thunderstorms will be very severe if they do take off. But there is just very low certainty because we are stuck under our area of high pressure. We need lower pressure. We need that trigger. And there's not much of that around today, even though there's a lot of cape, a lot of available energy for the thunderstorms to occur. That's why it's extremely high impact, but low likelihood at this stage, or high impact, low likelihood at this stage. We'll just have to see over the coming hours whether anything does come off. I'm sure there will be some showers, but we'll have to see if it is particularly severe. Now tomorrow, the main thunderstorm warning is for parts of Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland, and Northern England. This is because the proper area of low pressure starts to engage with the heat and of course we see that area of low pressure or that area of instability across northern parts of France starts moving and that will trigger some storms maybe in the southwest initially but this thunderstorm warning is from 2 p.m until midnight tomorrow and you see it's uh, just generally thunderstorms will bring disruption or may bring disruption and you can look at the further details and you see an area of thunderstorms is expected so it's not hit and miss storms like it is today the likelihood is higher and there could even be an amber warning issue perhaps you see some large areas of rain are likely but many parts will see modest rainfall however embedded intense rainfall may bring very large totals with 30 to 40 millimeters uh, 50 millimeters an hour or less and 70 millimeters in a few hours for unlucky locations at the same time frequent lightning and large hail will be additional hazards Reading that paragraph, could be some very severe storms around tomorrow, but it will be very hit and miss where they do occur. So do make sure if you are in these warning zones, you do stay safe. If you are in these aren't in these warning zones, there still could be some heavy thundery showers around. Just doesn't look like the uh, likelihood is that high or the severity will be that high. Uh, and also, if you are outside of these thunderstorms, you might more likely to be in the hot air, especially if you are to the south and east of these areas, so it's probably going to be 32 or 33 degrees once again tomorrow. Now, if you look at the UK, if you look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, you can see through this afternoon those thunderstorms breaking out across parts of the Midlands and Northern England, maybe into parts of the Republic of Ireland as well. Again, pretty severe where they do occur, but it really is where they do occur. As you know, I'm recording this around half two, as I said, by 3 pm, we've got some quite big storms here. And even by the 2 p.m. point here, we had a few storms breaking out. So we're not seeing that right now. So it's already playing slightly different than the UKV anticipated. But I said, things can change very quickly. Through this evening, could be a few odd showers around, but it should dissipate. And overnight, you can see that other area of storm activity come into the southwest. It shouldn't be too severe, but there could be some thunderstorms within it for it ignites into something quite a bit more severe through the afternoon for northern areas. You can see lots of very heavy areas of showers with thunderstorms embedded in it giving some frequent lightning and frequent heavy pulses of rain to the south and the east in this drier slot in this sunnier uh, slot 
could see, as I said, 33 degrees, maybe even higher potentially. Overnight Sunday, those thunderstorms do clear and we see more low pressure move in. Could be some more thunderstorms at times on Monday afternoon, but not expecting anything as severe on the weekend. For eventually the weather fronts move through and it could linger across much of England and Wales through Tuesday afternoon. Again, could be some storms to the southern edge of it. We still have some heat engaging, but generally to the north, more miserable rain and thick cloud. And that looks like the recipe for the rest of the week. As you can see, a huge area of low pressure moving in for Thursday with a big hook in it, implying quite a severe low with a big area of weather fronts producing lots of rain. Now, I can see why the thunderstorms could be very severe this weekend, as you can see some very high levels of Cape. Showed you that in the video yesterday, we were looking at thunderstorms, very high levels of Cape around both today and perhaps even higher as we head into tomorrow. Even to the east, where there is no thunderstorms expected, very high levels of Cape. It's just because we have no trigger, because we are under the centre of the highs. Further westwards, we're seeing briefly lower pressure, a bit more instability around that's where it engages with the energy and we can see those big thunderstorms take off we can also see the upper air temperatures the reason why there's a lot of cape around is because of an extremely hot air mass over the course of the next couple of days we're still up into the mid to high teens not quite the 20 degrees we saw earlier this week but because we are uh, we've had this heat trapped for six days now uh, we don't need the extremely high upper air temperatures to get very warm surface conditions. You can see by Sunday afternoon really is the east, further westward still warm upper air temperatures but starting to cool. You can see by Monday could just about hold on in the far southeast to sort of the low to maybe mid-teens. For by Tuesday, much fresher conditions. So look at that, more almost arctic air masses moving in for northern Scotland. That's minus 3 or minus 4 degrees at 850 HPA, which could perhaps even give a frost in some places if that did hold on. So it's a proper cool autumnal air mass, but it's looking likely here will get swept away as those weather fronts move in. Now if you look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon, the UK is predicting 30, 31 degrees, so already eclipsed this. Um, so it looks like the UKV is not particularly performing too well, perhaps showing a bit more cloud or mist and murk than we have seen in reality. Uh, as I said, those temperatures by 1pm are already at 32 degrees. So UKV not performing particularly well today. Overnight temperatures not dropping much below 20 degrees in many areas. And you can see where we avoid the storms tomorrow in the east, we could just about see a 33 degrees there across the East Midlands into East Anglia around 2 p.m. tomorrow. So that won't be good tomorrow if the UKV is uh, under uh, under reporting some of these values. You know, if it's two degrees down today, could be looking at 34, 35 tomorrow. I doubt it, uh, but there is a possibility we could see an isolated. 33, 34, 35 tomorrow. Again, it's nowhere near as widespread as the heat is today, but locally it could be as intense tomorrow, and there's a very small chance it could be even hotter for the peak temperature. But you can see the majority of areas are back into the mid-20s or even low-20s as those thunderstorms start to roll in and generally fresher air. Into Monday, though, still warm in the east, still could nudge a 26, 27, maybe even 28 or 29, and you can't even rule out a 30. Uh, if the hot air just hangs on a little bit and the UKV is underestimating it a bit. But widely, the north and west, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, mid to high teens as much fresher air moves in. And all areas are in that by Tuesday. Look at that, maybe 25 in the far south, but most areas in the teens now. And that continues into Wednesday where all areas are back fresher conditions. Parts of the Midlands, 11, 12 degrees, almost 20 degrees cooler than a week ago, a week ago to this day or even a few days ago. So huge drop off in temperatures as we do head into this upcoming working week. Well, some of you will very much enjoy a bit fresher conditions, but some, unfortunately, will dislike this as it is pretty much now going to be the slow decline towards winter time. Uh, still is the potential for hotter weather at times, maybe an Indian summer you know, as we head into October or November. But really then we're looking at maybe mid-20s max. Um, so yeah, any insane heat, any 30 plus degree temperatures looking unlikely now until uh, at least probably May next year, unfortunately. 
If you do look at those thunderstorms in more detail, first looking at the Rome run, unfortunately this only covers parts of uh, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and Southern Scotland, or the far south of Scotland, uh, as it is a French model, so we can't quite see the full extent of the storms tomorrow. You can see through this afternoon a few storms breaking out. Here, the Rome run perhaps a bit more accurate, breaking them out at maybe 4pm and peaking around the 6, 7, 8pm uh, this evening. So it could be a little bit more accurate, the uh, Rome run here. And then as we enter tomorrow, more storms break out into the southwest. Quite widespread and quite severe, actually, whereas the UK, if you had it more, it's just heavier rain. Then as we head into tomorrow afternoon, lots of widespread showers and storms breaking out. And even an area of storms into eastern England. Very interesting. Didn't see any rumblings of that from the UKV. Now, it is very possible the energy's there. Just don't know if the trigger to cause those storms. But you can see in amongst this, we've got the Cape Values, 2,000 joules per kilogram in there. Very high levels. Could be some very severe storms using that uh, and giving some very high rainfall rates. And that's why we've seen that yellow warning issued. If we did have more certainty, uh, if there was more of a trigger around, more of a sort of a convergent zone or, or an in area of instability, then there is a, or, uh, then there is a real possibility we could have seen an amber warning. Maybe an amber warning at very short notice, but at this stage only yellow warning issued as those storms rumble in as we head into tomorrow before dissipating through the evening. But look at that, severe storms in places, in some parts of the northeast perhaps. Line of storms, maybe some wall clouds appearing there, uh, line convection through Sunday afternoon, because so it could be really quite severe in a few spots. Now, if we finish for the shorter range, we'll have a look at the R pairs run. Slightly lower resolution, but still high resolution compared to the main models we look at. You can see through this afternoon a few odd showers, but nothing too severe. And as we get into tomorrow, you can see those heavier thunderstorms breaking out all of a sudden around the 2, 3, 4 p.m. point tomorrow afternoon. Could be very lively for northern areas. Not too much of a rumbling in the south and the east, but there could be a few odd showers. For eventually those thunderstorms move away and we go into more of a fresher westerly flow. Now, talking of fresher westerly flows, let's have a look what the longer range charts have for the next couple of weeks. Now, you can see the high pressure still holding on, but low pressure rumbling in off the Atlantic over the next couple of days. Doesn't look like a massive area of low pressure will move into at least Wednesday or Thursday, but then we see a big low starting to gather for the end of the week into next weekend. And you can see some really quite severe lows, really quite stormy and unsettled. A bit of even green and blocking appearing. And right at the extended range, we're looking at a pretty cold pattern with northerly winds coming on the backside of these lows, trying to pull quite a lot of cold air in. Again, there's no real point looking at the upper air temperatures by themselves, uh, as it is a bit deceiving this time of year, uh, as it might not look too cold, but compared to average, you can see we are firmly under the blues, especially in the North Atlantic. But we've got to watch out for these systems here. These are ex-tropical storms, ex-hurricanes, that can spice up the forecast. So that's why, even though this is looking pretty interesting in the longer term, we can't take it at face value at all, as these ex-tropical systems could spice it up as we head into the longer range. If you do look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure holding on at the moment. Low pressure eventually coming in off the Atlantic by the middle of this working week. And look at that. Day 10, a huge area of low pressure parked over the top of us with quite cold air coming into its backside. And look at those 10 meter winds. Extremely strong. That'd be very lively indeed for the United Kingdom. Very strong winds out to our west. Again, probably. This could even be a named storm potentially looking at the severity of this down under 968 millibars for a week on Tuesday. Okay, hopefully this doesn't come off, but if it did, then yeah, could be a named storm, could be really quite severe. So we'll have to very much keep a close eye on this. Finish for the longer range runs, looking at the ECM WF. Again, we've got westerly flow coming in through this working week. Then we could see low pressure try and nudge it off the Atlantic, but actually, in the contrary to the GM, the high pressure built in from the south. Again, this looks quite a hot pattern, but the hot air to our south is running out. So it would be warm, probably maybe into the mid-20s, but most importantly, it would be dry and pretty sunny. Again, this will be all down to these tropical systems, how they're affecting the jet stream in here, pushing it further northwards, allowing high pressure to build. And as I said previously, it was pushing it southwards, allowing that big severe low to develop. So you can see the huge disparity we have at that day 7 to day 10 range. So all things are on the table. Would probably go more towards the unsettled route from the looks of the runs over the past few days. But you never know. We'll have to keep a very close eye on it. Now to finish by looking at the ensembles, these are the latest GFS. You can see very hot, but slowly 
kind of coming down after that sort of 24, 36 hours. So by tomorrow afternoon, uh, as we head beyond that, the upper air temperatures will slowly start to decrease back towards average and probably will be around average for the end uh, until the end of this run. Precipitation does increase. It's not masses uh, of precipitation, especially in the next seven days. We a spike perhaps on Monday as we see low pressure move in. Could be some showers, storms, maybe even a bit of light frontal rain. And a briefly drier period as we're in between systems and then low pressure could churn up again. You see the sea level pressure is descending in the longer term. It's not massively descending, but still descending nonetheless, implying low pressure could become more likely. And you can see the big drop off in temperatures well over 30 degrees today and probably tomorrow into sort of 33, 34 degrees. But come Wednesday, Thursday, we're looking at 19 or 20 degrees at best. And if we finish by looking at the ECMWF ensembles, look at the midnight run, pretty much the same as the GFS. Hot the next 36 hours, dropping towards average and hovering around average with considerable precipitation as we head through the middle third of the month again. As we saw from the operational runs, I have to keep a very close eye on it, as there could be quite a bit of disparity between those runs, especially with what happens with the jet stream. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you are hating this heat wave we have at the moment, there's only a day or two left, uh, depending on where you are. So hopefully by Monday or at the latest Tuesday, things will be much fresher. But still got, uh, if you're in the southeast, uh, still got another two days, including to this afternoon of 33, 34 degrees to get over. But also there is the big risk of storms, especially for Midlands northward. So do make sure you keep an eye on that live radar and the weather warnings as those severe storms will most likely be the most severe tomorrow afternoon and will be the most widespread tomorrow afternoon into the evening. But they could occur today and they could even occur into Monday as well. There's so much energy around. Uh, so things could trigger at very short notice. So make sure you stay safe um, and keep an eye on that live radar. So, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.